Uh, flooding and heavy rainfall continues in the wake of tropical cyclone Jasper, which had downgraded to a tropical low after making landfall last night. Thousands remain without power. Hazardous conditions set to continue today. Joining me live is Emergency Management Minister Murray Watt. Thanks for your time. It sounds like the worst is over. The clean-up is mainly beginning. Is that the situation up there in the north? Yeah, that's about right, Tom. Uh, the, fortunately, the system has now passed uh, the coast. Uh, it's gradually weaving its way across Cape York at the moment, very slowly, I might add. Um, there hasn't been a huge amount of damage from winds uh, and that kind of thing. The update we got today from the SES was that there's somewhere between 10 and 20 properties that have been damaged in the region, which, considering what might have happened, isn't too bad. But flooding is probably the main issue that's now facing uh, the region. It's still raining pretty heavily up here, as you can see behind me, uh, and there's some river systems in the region that are at risk of flooding. But uh, power but power outages is probably the major issue facing the community. The Queensland government is doing a really good job of getting that back up and running. They're actually moving about 500 energy workers up here from Townsville and other regions to help with those reconnections. Um, so I recognise that it's frustrating for people, but help is certainly on its way. In terms of that help, look, a lot of people in this situation don't quite know what to do. It's simple enough if one house is flooded, you sort of go about your insurance claim and so on. But aside from that, what's the shorter term assistance people can get? Maybe their car's been um, ruined. Maybe they've, uh, you know, the power's gone out, they've got no food in the fridge and they're, they're struggling if they're on a welfare payment. What are the shorter term avenues for help at the moment? Yeah, well, I'm pleased to be able to say that just this morning we have activated, along with the Queensland Government, the first round of disaster assistance for people. Um, so this will be joint funding from the federal and Queensland governments, uh, personal hardship payments for those who've been directly impacted by the cyclone and the flooding, um, up to $180 per adult uh, and child, so up to about $900 for a family. There's also financial support being provided for the local councils because, of course, They'll incur costs with the recovery effort and cleaning up, you know, power lines, uh, trees down, that kind of thing. Uh, and there's also support available for people who, who have lost their power connections and any other utility connections to ensure they can be connected safely. Uh, so if people want to take advantage of that, the best thing to do is to jump onto the Queensland Reconstruction oh. Authority website or the hotline that's available as well. Yeah, do reach out because I know some people are a bit... Uh, lost as to what to do in that, that immediate aftermath. What about the summer of fires? Because we heard not long ago, we obviously had a bit of a perfect storm of uh, La Nina, all the water and growth, and then El Nino. But we've had so much rain lately in large parts of the country. Has that, has that risk of fire dissipated at all in some parts of the country? Uh, short answer, unfortunately, is no, Tom. Um, in fact, what we think is that the rain that's occurred in much of Australia in recent times, it probably delayed bushfires compared to the situation we were facing. But what it has done is obviously lift the vegetation even further. And the issue we're facing this summer is just very hot and dry conditions across a lot of the country, uh, which combined with that higher vegetation is a real fire risk. Um, the biggest concern I've got, though, heading into the summer is heat waves. Um, there's no doubt that we are going to be facing bushfires in some parts of the country, cyclones and floods in others. But what we know for sure is we're facing very hot conditions, particularly across the south of the country. Um, we lose more people, lose more lives every year from heat waves than any other form uh, of natural hazard. Uh, and it's going to be really mm. important this summer that people look out for their neighbours, make sure that they do seek cool spots within their homes, public pools, public libraries, things like that. So we're still facing a pretty difficult uh, uh, disaster season this year, and that's why it's good that we've seen so much preparation. We've got some pretty high power bills around the country and some pretty stressed power grids. We've got New South Wales saying, if you can, don't put your uh, air conditioner below 24. Is it is it disappointing in this day and age that that's what we need? Minister's saying don't use too much energy. Maybe there are people out there in Queensland struggling to afford a bill, won't put it on and get in that sort of heat stress. Does it feel like power bills are still too high in that sense? 
Oh, look, of course, as a government, we want to see all we can do to bring down those power bills. And I've talked to you before, Tom, about some of the measures that we've taken with energy price relief and capping coal and gas prices, those types of things, which even the Bureau of Statistics the other day recognised had made a real difference to power prices. But we obviously recognise that people are doing it tough and we need to continue supporting them. Um, but I think, you know, pretty much every summer we do see those requests, whether it be from ministers or energy authorities, uh, to conserve energy on very hot days. Uh, we have been able to bring a lot more energy generation into the network over the last year or so. Well, but what's your always... thermostat at in the Watt household? Well, I'm pleased to tell you we don't actually have air conditioning in our household, uh, Tom, uh, which is pretty strange in Queensland, I guess. But um, we've got ceiling fans and they run pretty fast through summer, but uh, we're lucky we've got some pretty nice breeze that comes through, although those nights in February can get a bit hot. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. That's the ultimate efficiency. I just want to ask you, I'm not sure we'll talk again this year, how would you describe the Labor government's end of the year? And do you think the government needs to take stock over the summer about some things that aren't working that well? Uh, look, I think any fair assessment of the Albanese government's work this year can see a huge amount of progress towards the objectives we set when we won the election. Um, we're working really hard to address those cost of living pressures that Australians are facing. Um, and we need to remember that almost every one of those measures we've brought in has been opposed by Peter Dutton and the Coalition. You know, they like to give us a lot of stick about cost of living, but every time we've put something up, they've opposed it. Energy price relief, childcare relief, um, cheaper medicines, the list goes on. So we're doing what we can, but we know there's more to be done. Um, but in the new year, I think that we'll also see even more around strengthening Medicare, uh, which is also a big cost of living issue for people, keeping that uh, a future made in Australia, building our manufacturing industry. And there's obviously been incredible work done on the national security front, biosecurity, natural hazards, those kinds of things. So um, I think that we've made some really good progress, but we're never going to be complacent and we know we need to keep earning people's trust. Yeah, poll suggests, uh, yeah. Even more than that. But anyway, we'll talk next year, I'm sure. Murray, what appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Have a good Christmas.